George, how you doing today? Julius, I, I'm good. How you doing, mate? Good, good. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for uh, joining me today for uh, Dark Obsession. You know, uh, VOD Digital tomorrow. You must be excited about all this. I am excited about all this. Um, I think mostly because we couldn't believe it even happened. It was. I think we shot the whole thing in like June 2020, and I don't know how the hell we convinced SAG to even let us do it. And I remember at the uh, the mini rap party dinner that we had went after everyone had been stuck in this house for like two weeks and don't even know we, we liked each other anymore. One guy, one of the actors made a little speech was like, guys, I'm amazed you actually made this happen because even without COVID, so many times I get called up for a project, they just gets canceled or never actually happened. So mm. yeah, it was, it's, it's a really weird feeling. Yeah. It's also Great. kind of sad in a way. I don't know. I, but anyway, I don't know. Sorry. I was, I was going to say, uh, before we jump more into the movie, you know, one of the first questions I like to ask, like, people that work behind the scenes what made you fall in love with the industry that you wanted to get into this um that's a great question so i remember when i was a really small kid uh someone found on my a uh, hard one of those old school hard drives at my high school the adventures of tim fred and george that were a bunch of videos of me my brother and my neighbor being complete muppets running around with invisibility cloaks on and just doing all these silly little skits and and man if i didn't just own up to that i would have probably been bullied alive but i was like yeah that was me i'm this weird filmy kid and then <clears throat> when i was at university i joined this sort of comedy video troupe and we, we did a video even at the time i was like no it's not a real career i'm gonna go do politics for grad school mm. and one of our videos went viral i ended up on a film set because a producer thought i was some sort of social me social media wizard even though i knew it was a complete fluke that it happened and he convinced me to go to film school and, and that's pretty much the story of how it went down Wow, that's amazing. Sorry. That's awesome. So I so I watched the, the movie the other night, man. And of course, I should have never watched it in the dark. Let's start off with that first. I watched yeah. it with no lights. I, on. I appreciate that. Yeah. So I love it, man. It was a amazing. it was a great crazy ride, a mystery psychological thriller. Like I said, it had to be at the edge of my seat. I couldn't wait for the ending. What what are you hoping for with uh, the viewers of like the thriller horror type of film people? What do you hope they get out of this when they first go watch this? I hope that they just find it to be a little bit different. You know, I think we, we, we there were moments in the movie where we, we, the actors just went a little bit further out there than, than they might. We, 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 we didn't, we tried not to play it safe. So mm. I think that's that in a nutshell. It's hard to talk about the movie too much because as you know, there's a lot of twists and turns and right. I, I mean, even there's one big, big element, which I, which you probably know what I'm referring to that I can't even say because that gives away a whole element of the movie um, in terms of what's really happening. But yeah, I think that's it. I think playing with reality mm -hmm. and having the audience question it. So they need to go watch it a second time to really, oh, I see. Yeah. You know, that would be those lovely. are the those are the best movies when you have to go. Well, wait a minute, I got to go watch this again. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's fingers crossed. Right. How did how I'm did really you, glad you appreciate it, man? Honestly, uh, how did you come up with the idea for this movie? You also co-wrote this with uh, Blade Morris, which he stars in the movie. Also, how did you come up with this idea, and how long did it take you to put the script together? Um, well, we it was, as I said, it was during COVID. We were stuck in this house, miles from anywhere, with no car. So we, we kind of let our imagination run away with us. Imagination run away with us. There was this big forest in the back of the property, and that's kind of where the story came from. Just this idea of, again, I can't really speak to the details of the story without giving it right. away, but Blaine came to me and was like, she pitched me the idea. And as you know, it's quite, it is not, it's a dark story. I'm like, where did you come up with this idea? Cause it's making me a little bit nervous. <laughs> but, and then, and then what, what happened after that was we sat every evening drinking wine, writing the stories when, you know, everybody was sort of finding things to do during COVID. Mm -hmm. And I got to give her the credit because she got that script over the finish line. Like, we were still writing as we were approaching production. I was moving on to the director role and she she got the script over the finish line and she just, she killed it. Wow. So when you guys were writing this together and you took over the seat for the director and you started rolling, where, did you, uh, while you're filming this, decide to change certain things because you thought it would be better for the film? I think we both are the kind of filmmakers that we realize that on the day, if something comes, presents itself, that's the better option, yeah. then we should do it. And even if we end up doing a take with both options, um, there were scenes that weren't even, didn't even make the cut of the movie uh, from the script. So we're not we're not those. I think being not being too precious can be a really helpful thing for a filmmaker, but also mm -hmm. sticking to your guns where you know you should. 
Yeah. But. You mentioned cutscenes with the DVD uh, Blu-ray, anything gets released. Are we gonna be able to see some of those cutscenes? Maybe. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> so I, I, did... I honestly I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh while you were writing with Blade and everything, uh and you came up with the idea for this, how did the, like the co- collaboration go between you two back and forth throughout the the process? Um, well, we'd write different sections of the film, okay. and then we would so we we work on different areas. Which I never I never co written before like this, so it was it was really it was a great learning experience to me. And then we would sort of give present give each other the parts we'd written, and then that person would take a pass at that. And I think that was important because then it created a sense of continuity of style throughout the script without it feeling like it was different people. Mm-hmm. Um, so and there are people who would aren't who have written many many co written scripts, and honestly, I. Uh, I think it can be a super valuable experience and I definitely want to you know, do that moving forward as well as if I can. Right. You're a director. Yeah. You also helped her write this script. Now, some people get excited when they work with somebody. Have you guys already thought about another idea for future movies? Are you excited to work with them again? Uh, yeah. I think Blaine is a fantastic filmmaker. I would work with her again. I would work with almost anybody on that project again from top to bottom. There was mm-hmm. the greatest group of people and I just had the most fun. So... Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Right. Speaking and of the Blaine's cast, killing uh, it. yeah, yeah, she definitely killed it in the movie. Uh, with the cast and everything, uh, how did you go over the process about casting specific actors for each role? What were you looking for? So I'll be honest with you, Alice. We we as I say, we're shooting in in May or June 2020. We were in Florida, and Blaine went to went went to drama school, and she knew a bunch of actors who were down there, and so mm-hmm. we just we cast around who we had. The, it was almost like a process of these people are interested, they, they're on board. How are we going to mold a character around this this actor, mm. if that makes sense? So there was an element of that, so, of building the characters around who we who we knew we wanted to be on the project. It was only later when we got Mina and Danielle um, and uh, and a couple of others that we actually did cut up more more active casting with a role in mind. Yeah. But before that, we because of the bizarre circumstances, we allowed those actors to kind of shape their own characters which is kind of cool. Now this film premiered in Europe first, right? Did That's great. In, in England. Yes. The UK. Yeah, England. In how the UK. That, yes. Yeah. How did that go? What was the fan reaction with it? It went well. I, it seems like people really enjoyed it. I had, I uh, had, a lot, I had all these people contacting me while I, I was actually out there when it happened, which is really cool um, by coincidence. And uh, I had all these people contacting me saying they re- really enjoyed it. It seems to be doing well. So I'm really, really excited for the U S release. Amazing. So we said Dark Obsession, VOD Digital, November 8th. Uh, you know, if you're a thriller horror fan, this is a must watch, I believe, at least. And I'm not crazy about horror movies and thr- thrillers like that, but I, I enjoyed watching this. I Well, that's, 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 I couldn't ask for anything better. Someone who's not even, uh, you know, a big fan of the genre. That's fantastic. That's thank amazing. you. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, this was, uh, thank you again, November 8th, like I said. Uh, George, good luck with everything. Thank you, sir. Take it easy. Thank you. So, yeah.